You've tuned in to the most crazy rocking metal podcast on the air. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Metal from the Inside. All right, everybody, I'm Sydney Taylor, and I'm here today with a very special guest who is playing the Met Philadelphia tonight, uh, right here in the city of brotherly love. I have Richie Faulkner of Judas Priest. How are you doing, Richie? Sydney, it's lovely to be here in the city. I haven't been here for a while for obvious reasons, right. but it's great to be back. It's great to be back with Priest and great to be here with you. So, uh, so yeah, great to be back. Awesome. I mean, I kind of want to get right into what you just mentioned. First, how are you feeling? Because I know that last year you had a pretty major health scare. Um, you know, it was kind of blew up. You guys had to postpone the tour. Um, and, you know, fans and, you know, all of us alike were very concerned for you and your health. Um, but you seem to be killing it. You know, obviously you're back out on the road. Um, but how have you been just feeling in general since that all kind of went down? That's very nice of you to ask. Uh, I've been doing very well uh, over the last few months. I'll, I'll try and keep it short. Um, it's been, it's been a, you know, it's been a, a long road to recovery. Yeah. But um, you know, the we rescheduled these dates a few months ago, and it's actually been quite a good thing to have a target in the future to aim for. I think that was uh, an important part of the recovery process. You know, to have those dates looming. So, you, you know, so we had that to, to shoot for. Uh, we got out there on the road a few weeks ago and there's a bit of apprehension. You know, you, you don't quite know how the old heart's going to be and how the system's going to be until you get out there in front of people and do it for real. You know, you can, you can rehearse and stuff like that, but you don't know how it's going to be. Uh, and the first couple of shows went fine. And then we've just been going from strength to strength since then. So... Uh, it's been great, really. And we've had overwhelming support from the fans, you know, since it went down last end of last September, really. We've had an over, overwhelming support from the fans. Uh, they've been really supportive and, and loving, really. There's been, you know, like a, an outpouring of love from the metal community. Uh, and it's just been great, really. And uh, I can't thank the community enough. And, um, yeah, back on the road, back on the old, uh, on, on the axe and um, shredding as much as we can. Yeah. Like you said, you know, obviously recovery is a pretty lengthy process, especially for kind of what you went through. Um, and, you know, you didn't know how it was going to be until you got out you know, on the road and on stage with fans. Was there ever a part of you, you know, in that those early stages of recovering from what you went through? Did you ever think that maybe you wouldn't return? Were you, were you like apprehensive? Um, you know, obviously, in just caring for your overall health, which is always most important. Did you ever feel any any apprehension of, of rejoining? No, um, it was never an option, really. I don't know how naive that was. You know, I didn't really know much about the condition initially. Um, and I know some people were affected by this in, in different ways. And, and the recovery goes a lot longer. You know, I've spoken to people that are, you know, two, three, four, five years in that, um, you know, are still having problems from it. So, uh, you know, to think that... You know, you know what I was thinking initially was maybe a bit naive, not knowing how long I was going to take to recover. But um, I think it was the same mindset that kept me going when it actually happened. You know, you don't stop. You, the show goes on, um, and uh, again, sometimes that that could get you into all sorts of trouble. But that's just the mindset you have. You know, you, you carry on, um, and uh, that was that was the same really. And as soon as I was able to get home. Uh, and play guitar. The guitar was part of the medicinal process as well. It was part of who you are, you know, uh, and, and that helped me, I think, heal, get back to some sort of normality. And it was never an option, really. Um, as I said, it was part of who I am, part of what I do. And uh, it was always part of the, the target, as I said before, to get back on tour, get back with the band and get back out, you know, with Priest and uh, get back on tour, really. That was part of the, the mindset, as I said. Well, we are so happy that you're healthy and that, you know, you're back out there. And like I mentioned before, you guys are playing the Met uh, Philadelphia tonight, which um, I know a bunch of fans, you know, fellow fans that I know that were really excited about this show because it's at an opera house, which is kind of a unique venue for you guys. Have you guys ever played anything like this before? I think the guys have played this venue before, if I'm not mistaken. I, I don't think I have. 
if memory serves me correctly. I mean, we've played some beautiful buildings around the US, you know, some of the old Fox theaters, you know, from the 20s, uh, which are beautiful, beautiful buildings. I'm really looking forward to getting to the Met and seeing it. Again, I've, I've never, never been there, never experienced it. Um, but I've heard lots of good things about it, you know, historical building. Um, and again, we haven't been to Philly for a few years and Philly's always been kind to Priest, always been kind to heavy metal. So it's gonna be good to get back down there see those metal maniacs and uh and and share in the metal experience that is the judas priest show tonight yeah it's i'm really excited to see it i'm going to be there and i want to talk a little bit about the set list because um, one of the things that i remember seeing the set list back last fall before you guys um you know obviously you had your uh, heart problem um and it was just it blew me away and obviously the set list has kind of carried over a little bit to uh the tour now and you guys have a little bit of everything in there you guys have the classics you know you even have a uh, one of the tracks that stuck out to me was blood red skies from uh 1988's ramming down um what was the process uh and if you were you know i'm sure that you are involved but you know when it comes to creating the set list and picking you know what songs you guys are going to throw in there for, for especially a spanning uh, tour like this, where it's, you know, 50 years of a priest. Well, you can never get it all in, you know, that, that's, that's for sure. You can never, you know, you'd be there for a week, which I wouldn't mind, to be honest. You could do, you know, five nights at the Met doing everything. Yeah. Um, but, it, you know, you start off, you look at what you did on the last tour and you try and do something different this time, right? You don't want to go out and do the same songs again, obviously. Uh, you look at if, if there's any anniversaries you can hit, uh, you know, um, and then you, obviously you've got to do the classics. You've got to do, you know, another thing come in, living after midnight, breaking the law. And then you, you fill in the gaps of stuff that, as I said, you haven't done for a long time or not at all. You know, this time we're bringing out Rock and Roller, um, One Shot at Glory, uh, we had Invaders in the set, um, as you said, Blood Red Skies, which we haven't done since uh, Epitaph. And I think before that, they hadn't done it before. So we're trying to make like a well-rounded set, um, songs that, you know, not too deep cuts. You know, it, it's an anniversary tour. You don't want to sort of lose the audience, if you know what I mean. It, it, you know, there's potentially um, fans that are coming out for this type of tour uh, that want a specific type of, Judas Priest track, if that makes uh, sense. You know, it's an it's an anniversary tour. Uh, so you can't go too obscure, uh, but at the same time, keeping it interesting. So we consider all those things. And as we move through the tour, different territories, um, you, know, we, we'll, you know, we might come back in the future. We might change the set list up again to keep it fresh. And again, not repeat what we've done on this go round. So uh, we're constantly looking at it. We've made a couple of changes so far, actually. I won't reveal what they are, just in case, you know, people don't want spoilers. But we put a couple of different ones in on this go round. So uh, we're constantly looking at it. How can we improve it? How can we create a different dynamic? And, um, you know, we can't get it right for everyone, but we get it right for us. And, you know, we think we're getting it right for you guys. And uh, um, so, yeah, we think we've got a good pace set at the moment and we're, we're enjoying it. Yeah, it's like I said, it's really well-rounded. And I mean, I know that you have been in the band now for quite a while. Um, and I'm, you know, you grew up listening to Priest, a lot of these bands. I mean, is there still one song or multiple songs that you can think of that, you know, you get out there that you're still like, wow, I'm playing this, you know, with, I'm, I'm in Judas Priest and I'm playing these songs, you know, whether it's you got another thing coming or, you know, Electric Guy, or do you have any uh, song like that that brings up those feelings for you? Definitely, yeah. There's a couple of them. One of them is uh, "Victim of Changes." Uh, I think purely because of what it signifies for the band, it's like Priest in a nutshell. You know what I mean? It's got every. If you know, if aliens came down from from outer space and asked what Judas Priest was, I would play them <laughs> "Victim of Changes" because it contains everything that Priest is. You know, it's got the dynamic, the light and shade, the heavy guitar riffs, the the you know the vocals uh you know everything in a nutshell so um what that represents is a is a massive honor to be playing a song like that and then also the sentinel you know is, is my personally my favorite track off my favorite record so those two for sure are up there and um and really mean a lot to me to be playing and it's definitely like a pinch me moment and it just makes you you know you realize the importance of the duty that you're up there doing, you know, 50 years in. I've only been there, you know, for just over a decade, but 
it's the duty you're flying the flag forward into the you know the the future um and it's just an incredible honor to be up there doing those songs really and you, of course, have Glenn Tipton coming out um, at the end of the show. Um, if I'm correct, does he come out? Is Has he been coming out every show? Is it every couple of shows? How has that been working? Well, he comes out as and when he can. As and when he can. So okay. he, he didn't start off this leg. Uh, he came out, I think, uh, I think he, he came out in Oakland. Um, and he'll be out as long as he feels like he, he's able to do it. You know, as we know with this condition that he's battling, um, sometimes he has good days, sometimes he has bad days. So, um, you know, he'll be there as long as he, he feels like he's able to do so. And the great thing about the fans, you know, with this whole situation is that when Glenn's not there, they're, they're totally accepting. They understand the situation um, and they've been accepting of that. So hats off to them and we thank them as well for being so accepting. Yeah, I think it's so great that he is still able to come out, you know, like you said, when he when he's able to and plays those songs. Um, and for you, you know, kind of touching on what we were just talking about with having it be a pinch me moment. It must be really cool for you to still be able to play with him in some capacity, you know, because he was the original guy who wrote these songs. So I'm sure that's kind of thrilling sometimes for you. Well, I miss him. I miss him up there on stage as well. You know, when I joined the band, Glenn was up there, obviously, and I did two, two tours with Glenn. And um you know, so I found my feet with the band, with Glenn as part of it. Um, and so to not have him there, uh, you know, I missed him. So to have him back up there is is uh, is a special thing for me. You know, I know it's a special thing for everyone, but um, if we're talking about me personally, it, yeah. it, you know, I miss him when he's not there. So having him up there is is, is fantastic for me, for sure. Yeah, no, it's exciting. And uh, I'm very excited to see the show. I hope he comes out. Um, one thing that I wanted to touch on too, uh, you know, quickly, um, was of course the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction, which I'll be the one to say that it's total blasphemy that Judas Priest is not in there. Um, you don't have to say it, I'll say it. <laughs> I, I think I think it's just nuts. But um, I found so much, I had so much respect for Dolly Parton when she decided to back out. And I know that that was, you know, obviously a big thing. The Rock Hall made their statement. But what was your reaction when you saw that she made that statement and, and decided to bow out from her nomination? Well, I think it's um, I think it raised questions about, you know, branding. I think Dolly was uh, very conscious of her brand, uh, you know, and I think it raised questions as to what the brand of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is as well. Um, there's been a lot of questions about, as you said, you know, if it's the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame without Judas Priest, then what credibility does it have really? If it's called the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, I don't quite know, to be honest. Um, I think the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame does what it wants and, uh, you know, I think Dolly will probably still get in anyway, weirdly, even though she, you know, you know, removed herself <laughs> from it because, because who knows? Um, again, I, I've said it before, but I think, you know, the 50th anniversary tour signifies 50 years of, you know, creating new music and touring around the world to beautiful fans and beautiful countries. And I, I think that's a more than more of an accolade than any trophy on the shelf, you know, um, and continuing to do so and continuing to have the, the passion and the, the, the support and the love from the fans, again, just means so much more than what the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame seems to be at this point, you know, and I'm not eligible anyway, so I can say what I want at this point, you know what I mean? But I know I know it's important to the band. I know it's important to some of the fans. Uh, and I also know it's not important to some of the fans as well. But um, so we'll see what happens. But that, that's my sort of opinion on it, really. Yeah, I, I've always felt the same way. And I, I will battle this, even though I know that sometimes it's not worth battling. But I've always said that it should be the, it should be the Music Hall of Fame. You know, like, yes, you should. Yes, you should. If we're not including people who if we're including people who, you know, there's some artists that I understand, like in the country and in like R&B stance where it's like, OK, they were innovators. They influenced stuff. Um, but then it's like we're putting Janet Jackson in here, which she's great, but she didn't influence rock and roll. It's just it's this ongoing battle. And it's blasphemy that Priest and Maiden and the Scorpions are not in there. It's just ah. Uh. That's right. And as you said, not to take anything away from people that are in there. Yeah. So maybe a rebranding of it, which gets back to my original point of what Dolly was talking about with our own brand. So that, that's what it summed up for me, really. It's just it just raises questions about 
what it means and what it's called. Maybe it needs a rethink, but really, at the end of the day, what does it really matter? Yeah, exactly. I think uh, Judas Priest's, uh, you know, longevity and the band's career, like you said, are what matter most. I mean, you guys are the band's 50 years old. You guys are out there. You know, Rob's still out there killing it. He sounds great. I've seen videos and looking forward to seeing him and seeing him tonight. Um, And lastly, I mean, do you I think I had heard some stuff about you guys writing a new record. Is that true? Is there going to be a new record coming out? Yeah, we, we, it's still in the process and it's been slowed down a lot because of the, obviously the pandemic. Yeah. We wanted to get together like we did on Firepower and, and record it together. Um, but obviously the, the lockdowns and everything like that slowed that process. Some of us live in the US, some of us live in the UK. So getting together proved to be a bit difficult over the last couple of years. Now everything's kind of opening up. It's a bit easier, but now we're on the road. So we've got a touring cycle to, uh, going down. Right. So if we can, we might be able to do it in between uh, the, the touring cycles. Um, you know, so hopefully we don't we don't have a release date. We, it's, it's not finished. We've got the songs, but we, we've got to record it. Um, we've got drums down. Um, I don't know if that's even been said yet, but, uh, you know, so we're going to try and build it up as we move through this touring cycle. But as Rob always says, it'll be finished when it's finished, you know. At this point in their career, there's no point in rushing anything, especially when we've waited this long through the pandemic to, to, to start doing it. Um, it'll be done when it's done. Um, but there will be another Priest record, and it's, it's shaping. We've got some great songs. Um, it's different to Firepower, but uh, it's definitely like a... The, you, you can hear where it's coming from. It's like the, not even Firepower 2, but you can... It's hard to say anything these days without people getting a, a, you know, like, you know, and I, you know, if I say it's like a continuation of firepower, people think it's firepower too. But it puts it's, out an expectation, yeah. Yeah, you know. Yeah. But um, it's definitely it's got its own it's got its own character, it's got its own legs, um, and we're we're looking forward to releasing it onto the world when it's done. Well, man, I am so looking forward to hearing that. Like you said, whenever whenever uh, you guys finish it up and it does come out, and I'm especially looking forward to seeing the show tonight. Um, it's actually my first time seeing Priest. Oh, so wow, fantastic. I am very excited. I've I've grown up being a fan, um, so it's it's very exciting. I'm looking forward to it. Oh, that's brilliant. Uh, it's always special when, you know, someone's seeing the pre-show for the first time, you know. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to seeing you later. I hope you enjoy the show. You know, I hope you don't see Priest for the first time and absolutely I hate it. You know, that would be awful. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's one of those things where it's just, I've, I like I said, I've grown up a fan. My parents were very enthusiastic in showing me. I've been listening to Priest literally since I came out of the womb. So it's just one of those things that I missed. I kept missing you guys. And now you guys are in my city and I'm like, tonight's the night. So I'm really looking forward to it. And uh, there's no way that you guys could disappoint me. So. Well, we're looking forward to it. We're looking forward to it as much as you are as well. So, um, yeah, hopefully uh, we'll see you soon, later, and uh, have a good night. Thank you so much, Richie. I really appreciate it. And uh, you guys can check out the rest of the Priest tour dates, including all the information, you know, as new news comes out about the record um, over at JudasPriest.com and all their social media. So thank you so much again, Richie. I really appreciate your time. And uh, thanks. Thank you, Sydney. See you later.